Assalamu alaikum rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Hope you're doing well. We are continuing our reading of Dr. Salva Fawazan's Akida Tawheed. We are in chapter 3. And he was talking about major shirk and lesser shirk. Let's begin. Bismillah rahman rahim It can be summarized from the above that there are differences between major shirk and lesser shirk. Major shirk removes one from the fold of Islam, while a lesser shirk does not remove one from the fold of Islam. However, it diminishes one's tawheed monotheism. Essentially here is that you need to watch out for shirk, but don't lose hope if you did lesser shirk. You have to repent regardless, but you have to watch out really watch out take it serious take it very serious major shirks makes one abide in the fire of hell forever while lesser shirk does not make one abide in the fire forever even if he enters it so you're seeing here that you do major shirk you don't repent you die hell forever lesser shirk repent appears that there will be an option of mercy. Major Shirk destroys all of one's deeds, while Lesser Shirk does not destroy all of one's deeds. Showing off and acting for the sake of worldly benefit only destroy the deed with which they intermingle. So, would you look at that? Let's say you did all these good deeds and then you start praying to other than Allah like what you did major shirk makes a person's blood and wealth lawful while lesser shirk does not make one's blood and wealth lawful so he's laid it out for us do major shirk removes you from the fold of Islam you get removed from the fold of Islam your blood and wealth are lawful now you did lesser shirk you won't abide in the fire of hell forever and it doesn't destroy all your deeds, okay? And your blood is and wealth are protected. Key factors. And ikhlas means sincerity. Oops, oh, this book holder. Sorry, fam, one second. It, it came down. This is like the, this is like the ruined one. It doesn't work very well. Okay, section 3 of chapter 3 now, Kufr, Disbelief, Definitions, and Types. This is important because I hear this word said, and sometimes I don't exactly know how, if it's being used properly by the people who are saying it. So this should prove very beneficial. Definition of Kufr. Linguistically, the word means to conceal or cover something. However, in the Sharia, it means the opposite of Iman, faith. Okay, so Kufr sounds like disbelief. So, as he put it. Okay, so Iman is faith. Okay, let's do an annotation here. So Iman equals faith. Alright. Kufr is the absence of faith in Allah and his messenger, peace be upon him absence of faith whether it is associated with denial or not even doubt and suspicion okay okay doubt suspicion denial so when Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab's book was titled removal of doubt it's like he's trying to make your faith strong in Tawheed, right? Look, so the removing of doubts helps you to have less suspicions which lead you to denial, which can get you way too close to or well, becoming an apostate. Even doubt and suspicion, turning away from the message, hatred, arrogance, or following desires which prevent one from following the message 
or tantamount to kufr. However, the one who denies is the worst disbeliever. The worst disbeliever. Likewise, the one who contests or denies the message out of hatred, although he is sure of the truthfulness of the messengers. So you're contesting it, you're denying, well now, you are doing kufr, types of kufr. Kufr is of two types. Major kufr, this takes one out of the fold of Islam. It is of five classes. Okay, so, this is going to go deep, so you can already tell. Kufr of denial. The evidence for this is the statement of Allah, the Most High, quote, And who does more wrong than he who invents a lie against Allah or denies the truth? Of Muhammad peace be upon him and his doctrine of Islamic monotheism and this Quran when it comes to him is there not a dwelling in the hell for disbelievers in the oneness of Allah and in his messenger Muhammad peace be upon him Quran 2968 Kufr of obstinacy and arrogance despite recognition of the truth this is a that one sounds complicated. The evidence for this is the statement of Allah the Most High, quote, and remember when we said to the angels, prostrate yourselves before Adam, and they prostrated except Iblis, Satan. He refused and was proud and was one of the disbelievers, disobedient to Allah. Quran 2, 34. Oh, okay. Obstinate defiance. Arrogance. All right, but arrogance connected to the to recognition of the truth. So here, if I read this ayat, Iblis Satan knows that Allah is the truth, right? He recognizes the power of Allah, yet he didn't obey to prostrate. So he was defiantly disobedient. Quote, and he went into his garden while in a state of pride and disbelief, unjust to himself, and said, I think not that this will ever perish. Oh, I remember this hadith. And I think not that the hour will ever come. And indeed, I am brought back to my Lord on the day. Oh, and if indeed I am brought back to my Lord on the day of resurrection, I surely shall find better than this when I return to him. His companion said to him during the talk with him, Do you disbelieve in him who created you out of dust, i.e. your father Adam, then out of nufta, mixed semen drops of male and female discharge, then fashioned you into a man? But as for my part, I believe. Oh, sorry, the ayah, I said hadith. But there was also, hold on, I'm getting ahead of myself. But as for part, I believe that he is Allah, my Lord, and none shall I associate as partner with my Lord. Quran 18, 35, 38. There's also a hadith, something about similar to this garden uh, ayat that I'm thinking of. I thought it was going to be that one. So here, arrogance and obstinacy. So... When you see this bountiful harvest, hard to remember that scarcity can happen. Allah can punish you and take that away. You have to watch out. Don't disbelieve. Don't don't start thinking you're untouchable. Kufr of abandonment of the message. Let's see this one. The evidence for this is his statement. Most high is he, quote, but those who disbelieve turn away from that whereof they are warned. Quran 46.3 Okay, so abandonment of the message. So when you turn away, then you're abandoning the message. Kufur of hypocrisy. The evidence for this is the statement of Allah, the Most High, quote, that is because they believed then disbelieved. Therefore their hearts are sealed. 
so they understand not. Quran 63, 3. So hypocrisy. Believing and not disbelieving. That one sounds like more of abandonment of the message to me. I, when you say hypocrisy, I thought it was going to be more of like saying you do something and then not doing it. Oh, there's a pretty dove. <laughs> I put some bread outside that I made and the dove's there. Can you hear it? Ooh, ooh, little dove. Lesser kufr. This does not take one out of the fold of Islam. Mashallah, that's so cute. Okay, lesser kufr doesn't take you out of the fold of Islam. We remember that. It is the kufr of actions. These are sins which have been referred to as kufr in the Quran and Sunnah, but which do not reach the level of major kufr. For example, kufr and nima, denial of favor, which Allah the Most High mentioned in his statement. So, people do takfir a lot, and I think it's because they, they put kufr on people very easily. So they do takfir, they try to kick you out of the fold of Islam. And then people rebuttal back with, you don't know what's in his chest. So we have to be careful. Very careful. Quote, and Allah puts forward the example of a township, Mecca, that dwelt secure and well content. Its provision coming to it in abundance from every place. But it, its people, denied the favors of Allah with ungratefulness. Quran 16, 112. Oof. That is something that humans do a lot. They think you're not favored if you don't have prosperity, but they never think that if you have prosperity, that it can be taken back from for your ingratitude. Yeah, you can't deny the favors of your Lord upon you. And wealth is a test, poverty is a test. Think of Job. And I'll be pleased with him. He was tested pretty, pretty deeply. Losing children, losing health, losing wealth. And then was rewarded for his gracious patience. And he never became ungrateful. If you only love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in times of plenty, plenty, how sincere are you? Can you still have that faith? When the walls crumble around you. Another example is fighting a Muslim, which is mentioned in his statement, quote, insulting a Muslim is sin, and fighting him is disbelief. Whoa. Reported by Bukhari, a Muslim. Wow. Look at that. A lot of Muslims insult each other. I gotta do better, too. It's hard not to insult because it's part of Jahiliya. It's very difficult because it can feel good to insult. But Muslim Twitter is horrible. So quite the worst examples of Muslims are the Twitter Muslims. You don't get that much on YouTube, but on Twitter, I mean, it's pretty horrible. And that's probably because of the liberal influence. And the red pill influence. And his statement, quote, Do not turn after me, disbelievers, striking the necks of one another. Reported by Bukhari and Muslim. Striking the necks of one another. So, don't fight another Muslim. Don't insult another Muslim. And don't go about harming each other, basically. Another example is swearing by other than Allah. Quote, whoever swears by other than Allah has disbelief or committed polytheism. That one is pretty clear by now. We, we've read a lot. We totally get that by now. Allah has called the one who commits a major sin a believer. He, the Most High, said, O you who believe Al-Qisas, the law of equality and punishment, is prescribed for you in case of murder. Quran 2. 178. This, i.e., murder, did not exempt the murderer from the group of those who believe. 
he, Allah, also called him a brother to the Waliul Kisas, member of the family of the one murdered, who has the prerogative of demanding retribution upon the murderer. He said, quote, but if the killer is forgiven by his brother, i.e. brother or the relative, etc., of the killed against blood money, then adhering to it with fairness and payment of the blood money to the heir should be made in fairness. Quran 2, 178. Okay. Blood money is an interesting concept. There was a little bit of that in draconian law that I read. So, I haven't gone into exactly the nuances of blood money, but there is that sort of, you owe something for when you take someone's life. Either we're going to do eye for an eye, or we're going to do blood money. Without doubt, the intent of the word brother is the brotherhood of religion. He, the Most High, said, quote, and if two parties or groups among the believers fall to fighting, then make peace between them both. But if one of them rebels against the other, then fight you all against the one which rebels till it complies with the command of Allah. Then, if it complies, then make reconciliation between them justly and be equitable. Verily, Allah loves those who are equitable. The believers are nothing but brothers in Islamic religion, so make reconciliation between your brothers. Dot, dot. Quran 49, 9 through 10. Whew, that is hard. Reconciliation is a noble affair, but it can be so difficult. Very difficult. So it's almost like you have to put the disagreements into perspective. But the people who go around takfiring, those are the ones that cause a lot of problems. But the degree of fighting is also important. Like if you're just having a regular argument, disagreement about something, you know, don't take it to heart. Sometimes you can be like, okay, we disagree. You go this way, I go that way. You know, we're not going to go at it, each other's next. But... Uh, we're not going to be in the same room. I can understand that. But if it's like all of a sudden you're going to go try to take that person's life because of something petty you can't get over, well, you done messed up, haven't you? Summary of the differences between major and lesser kufur. Major kufur removes one from the fold of Islam and destroys all of one's deeds. While lesser kufr does not remove them from the fold of Islam and does not destroy all of one's deeds. That sounds like what we read about shirk. So, major shirk, major kufr, big problem. Watch out. You really screwed up. Fix it. Minor kufr, minor shirk. Less daunting of a task to refix. But you still got to refix, but you're not uh, nailing the coffin yet. Major Kufr makes one reside in the fire forever. While Lesser Kufr does not make one reside in the fire, even if one is made to enter it. So similar to Major and Minor Shirk. Also, Allah could turn to him with repentance and thus he may never enter the fire in the first instant you see his hope major kufr makes one's blood and wealth lawful while lesser kufr does not make one's blood and wealth lawful so right there you see how takfiris are very dangerous in a sense because they willy-nilly get angry at a person, disagree with the person, bam. Now, we that protection that's upon the believers for another believer is removed, which is serious. Could you imagine you're going around talk-fearing people, boycotting people to the point where you're trying to stir up trouble? 
and you're calling this person a disbeliever and all types of slurs and your judgment is totally off and totally wrong because remember in Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab's book he pointed out how the person has to know they may be ignorant of their shirk if, if they haven't been educated and they did it without really knowing it you need to educate them first so spreading the religion studying the religion these are all things we do in order to protect ourselves from falling into kufur and shirk but to also save people from doing it as well and curing up ignorance because if somebody is really ignorant and they don't know the religion and a manipulator comes and it's like hey uh you, this person's doing x y and z so you can they're you can hurt them now because they're no longer a muslim and you can do it and if that person is educated and is like you're trying to get me to do what now no you're wrong and here's the evidence then you save yourself from being trapped from being used in some plot Major kufr necessitates total enmity between its people and the believers. So, it is not permissible for the believer to make friendship with them, disbelievers, even though they may be the closest of relatives. As for lesser kufr, it does not prevent all forms of friendship. Rather, the person is loved and taken as a friend to the extent of what he possesses of faith and despised to the extent of his sin. This is interesting because I have noticed more and more, like I'll follow some Landon Starbuck and Sydney Watson. I like these ladies for some of the things they were doing against the woke. And then I saw them rear their heads against Islam and I was like, say what? Say what? And then you have to remember, ah, uh, you can agree on some things, but we're not friends we're not friends you will see you see you see yourself as an enemy to us and then if we say you're not one of us and we have different rules for you you get mad but you literally you're doing the same thing and we just read with the Jesuit video that I just did in their words that the modern progressive reformists of the Catholics haven't gotten to yet it's a 15th century document uses the word infidels as well so if someone looks at the text and not the modern reformists who are very controlled and fearful of liberal atheists if they actually look at how the past christians saw the pagans and you know really didn't like them and they wanted to convert them and did conquests on them you would see that the christians had their own groupings right the Amish, they are together in their community and they also have the outsiders. The rules for their own group are different than the rules they have for others. You can have general rules for humanity, human dignity, but the obligations to your fellow is much higher. Even a Mason has this. Um, Jesse Lee Peterson interviewed a Freemason and he, and he goes, aren't you afraid? Jesse said something stupid. He said, aren't you afraid they're going to Allah walk by you? Uh, if you have a, ma a Muslim who's a Mason and he said no not if they're a Mason if they're a fellow Mason so you see how the Masons have a brotherhood fraternity if you read their documents you can see how the Christians have their groupings and how they saw the pagans as different okay and Jews from the little that I've studied about them I have printed out over 500 pages of the Babylonian Talmud but uh, open sourced because I went to buy the volumes and it was over a thousand dollars I'm not spending the money on that and the only way you can get them now is that I could find I haven't didn't check Amazon though I was looking on used bookshop sites and they're all very expensive and private estates selling them uh, they're quite expensive so I couldn't afford it but I could find one for free that I could print which causes a lot of ink a lot of paper but they have the Jew and the non-Jew are different 
So, what I'm trying to say here is that every group has in-group treatment and out-group treatment. Even in The Walking Dead, let's take fiction, okay. There's a line where they have Randall, a guy who they captured while they were going to get Herschel from the bar after Shane had blasted the walkers in the barn and later on they're discussing how they're gonna get rid of Randall and the Dale the grandpa looking guy he's trying to go around and spare this guy and Glenn the Asian one says he's not one of us and they talk about how their duty is to keep the group safe. So you can see even in cinematic fantasy realms, there's the in-group. In-group preference is different than the outsiders, right? And this is why some confederacies don't work and why a union works better. The United States... United States under the Federal Union. If you have just Confederates, like what happened with the Native American tribes, these are different in-groups fighting each other, and the treaties kind of wear down and don't work. So, when we read here that it's very serious when you uh, leave the fold of Islam, it makes sense. Because the way you treat your fellow Muslim, it's like your in-group, your ummah, it's like you're together. You have an obligation to the other person, right? And so if you're a kafir, you're an infidel, you don't, you're not one of us, so we're going to treat you different. And this is, this is apparent. Every group has this. Every group has this in some way. And when it's wolf pack against wolf pack, lion pride against lion pride, group of elephants against group of elephants, you're going to see this everywhere. Ant colony versus ant colony. It's one of my favorite things to watch, see if you can find yourself some videos, when another ant colony invades the other one. They go inside and like totally destroy the nursery of the other ants in group preference. It's just the way the world works. And, okay, another fictional example. In Lord of the Rings, the Night's Watch. Remember? They would fight the wildlings. The wildlings hated the crows. And they did not like each other. Alright? Important. Very important. Yes, Jon Snow made them all buddy-buddy. And yeah, I'm, I'm pointing it out. But you could see, at least in the beginning... It, they were the night's watch. They had a duty to each other. Okay? A loyalty to each other. So, if you left the night's watch, you could get punished. The Roman army, I remember when I read Caesar's Gallic Wars. You know, you see how the Romans had to stay united against the Gauls. And the punishment throughout ancient Rome for quite some time was if you left the army, you were a deserter, you were crucified, you were killed. Capital punishment. Okay? Treason is another example. You're part of this group, your nation, you commit treason against us, you will be punished. So, when we read here about Major Kufr, Minor Kufr, Major Shirk, Lesser Shirk, you're seeing how important it is to keep yourself within the fold of Islam because you need to know what's permissible for your fellow believers and what's going what is going to be permissible upon you once you leave the fold of Islam and you learn what's the right of you as a member of Islam and what you owe to others okay so when i talked about the manners of just the general manners of a Muslim, but also the manners that you give to your fellow Muslim, right? Very important, I'd argue. Very important. Okay. 
the next video inshallah will be on section four dealing with nifak hypocrisy definition and types so just make sure you take time to read about these as well and maybe there's another book you like and such but just remember uh, major kufr has five classes kufr of denial kufr of obstinacy and arrogance of kufr of doubt and uncertainty kufr of abandonment of the message kufr of hypocrisy okay keep everything on point and if two parties basically reconciliation is very important we want the muslims to get along Reminds me of that Christian saying, blessed are the peacemakers, something, something, some Bible verse, but I remember that. That's actually a Bible verse that pissed off Ben Shapiro that Candace Owens posted on Twitter, which really made Zionists quite mad. So, again, it's profound to think about what we owe to each other as Muslims. Let me know what you liked, what you learned, and if you'd like to support my content and see other things I write on the blog, you can join it by going to www.subscribestar.com slash Hope to see you there.